to Artland. Have you ever been to an art auction? Because I have, and I watched the auctioneer and I was like, this guy is hilarious. How did he get this job? Did he go to auctioneer school? Who is he? Turns out, <laughs> in this case, his name is Steven Ranger, and no, he did not. Today I am at Waddington's, and I'm gonna be talking to Steven Ranger, who is an auctioneer and appraiser, and one of the forerunners in this country developing a secondary art market for contemporary art. Can you do the classic auctioneer call? No. You can't do it? No. I wanted you to teach me how to do it. No, 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 <laughs> I, I can't. You know, it, it, I, it would sound really, really foolish if I did. <laughs> You know, what, yeah, not like when they do it where it's what, 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 really One of the things I do do is that I, you know, when I do charitable auctions, I play a game called Chicken. What's that? Uh, where basically I start something at about like $10. And I go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And, <laughs> and it's the, the worst impression of, you know, uh, of a traditional... Uh, so what, they have to just put their paddle up like, well... No, they keep the paddle in the air and then when they put the paddle down, they're chicken and they're out. That's why oh. the game, game's called Chicken. <laughs> you got it? This is a collection of Nicholas Hornyansky prints. They'll be part of an online, oh, yeah. yeah, an online auction. Uh, we preview everything live, and meaning that we have specific days when collectors, the, the public, come and have a look at everything before an auction starts. Tom Hopkins, kind of a mystical painter, uh, and um, he's known for his big red canoes. Oh yeah. Long before Peter Dorg was painting. Whoa. Nobody owns canoes. Nobody owns canoes. You know, I own canoes. I like canoes. Again, another work that's coming up for sale sometime this fall. Robert Hool is one of Canada's most important First Nations artists. And he, um, well known artist, curator, teacher at OCAD. And this is in one of our online sales. The estimate would be below $500 on something like this. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my gosh. About 30,000 objects a year go wow. through this auction house. Wow. Does anyone buy something online without having seen it in person All the first? time. Everything's changed. The yeah. industry is entirely disrupted. And it's disrupted by the internet, it's disrupted by Instagram, it's disrupted by the way we look and see and want to buy things. Fast. Uh, faster, yeah. immediate, but that's all good. Yeah. What was sort of traditional sort of fodder and material for auction houses antiques, uh, objects, things like that, there's no interest in. There's far more interest in post-war work, yeah. in the Otto Batistes, in Painters 11, you know, the new landscapers, and Edward Bertinsky. Yeah, or maybe John Hartman. John Hartman, yeah. certainly. You know, Dorland, yeah. um, Steve Driscoll, yeah. you know, who are the, the, the new landscapers. Yeah. The artist who really kind of loosened it all up for me was Edward Hopper. I can see that. The painting, it's as cliche as it gets, it's Nighthawks. It's where cliche becomes iconic. And there was another one of his, Pennsylvania Coal Town, a man sweeping stairs in some dusty industrial Pennsylvania town where, you know, I, I didn't kind of come at it from a curatorial point yeah. of view. I came at, you know, from a, a purely aesthetic point of view yeah. that these works moved me. I have the good fortune uh, to have a career in the art auction business where I get to see great things every day. What tips do you have for people that are hoping to become collectors eventually? I think you have to buy with your head and you have to buy with your heart. You have to buy the best you can afford. It always pays you back in the end. Canadian contemporary art is a huge bargain. The bar is so high and the price tag is so low. If we were in the States, you'd be adding a zero to this. There's no real risk in buying an artist young. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it pays you back every day. So you buy an amazing contemporary Canadian piece from an amazing gallery, an amazing artist who is probably delighted for the sale, and you love it, you have it on the walls for a couple years, and then you want something new. So say that you want to sell it. How are you going to do that? That second sale is called the Secondary Art Market. And Stephen Ranger, after being with Waddington's doing appraising and auctioneering for a while, realized that there was a gap here where there wasn't really a great place to do that and the secondary art market was not thriving in the way that it should be for contemporary Canadian art. And so he saw that gap and he's working to fill it with his company, Concrete Contemporary. Let's talk to him about it. Canada has what I would call a very underdeveloped secondary market for contemporary work. So the auction steps up and says, yeah. well, here we are. A secondary market, I think, provides almost a platform for a primary market. Yeah. Because it assures collectors that, you know what, there, there is 
residual and residing value here. Yeah, it's an investment. Whereas yeah. like if you're buying a contemporary Canadian piece now, you're just buying it because you love it for your wall. Yeah, you don't feel which like is you're which make is money. actually the reason you should be buying anyway. Of course. But the yeah. reality is that at some point you might want to sell it. Yeah. Most people aren't selling for profit. They're selling because they want to buy new work. We thought it would be more of a a five to seven year project. I see it more as a 10 to 15 year project yeah. to really kind of develop this market. But what we have done is we've established secondary prices for artists who never before sold at auction. I guess we're all just gonna run out now and buy a piece that we love uh, from a young artist. And when we're ready to sell it in 10 or 20 years, we'll call Steven. <laughs>